the next video in this video i will show you how to integrate firebase cloud firestore in native android application so first you will have to create a firebase project next uh, just create a native android project it can be a jetpack compose project or an empty views project i am using old xml layout empty views project uh, next uh, whatever is your <coughs> application id from your build.gradle just copy it and inside your firebase project you just have to click on add app select android and here you just have to enter your package name uh, so i can enter uh, i have already entered that package name so like i have already created app for this so it, this won't be valid if i try to enter it again but i'll just add something over one over here just enter some uh, name my app then click on register app we don't need the sha1 for uh, cloud fire store and then it will ask you uh, to download this config file so just download it once you download it you have, will have to go to your project drop down over here and you will have to just drag and drop the google services.json file inside your app folder uh, this app folder okay once you do that uh, so here i have copy pasted like i have dragged and dropped this google services.json again go back to your android drop down then click on next it tells you to add this uh, uh id com google uh, google services so just go to this build.gradle and here you can add this next uh, you will have to go to and add this this one is already added com.android.application it is by default present inside your android project so this is this okay so you only need this uh, google services id so i have added that next you will have to add this platform bomb bill of deep materials uh, and here i have added this now this is a new thing in android studio iguana so i have added this over here but the version and the reference is inside this libs.versions.toml so here you can see i have added this firebase bomb uh, version number and this is uh, where it is referenced from okay next uh, for firestore you also need to add this dependency for cloud firestore and then you can just click on next and continue to console now uh, you will have to uh, go to your cloud fire store so for that i will just play this video you can just go to build tab click on firebase fire store database uh, and here it will ask you like for it will just ask you for getting started so click create database then here you will have to select your region or like whatever region you are on i have just selected united states but you can select any region but you can't change the region later on so be careful and next here it provides two options start in production mode and start in test mode so for production mode you will require firebase authentication i have already made a video on how to do email and password authentication of firebase in native android application but uh, suppose you are not uh, you for authentication you have your own backend then you will have to go with start with test mode uh, to be honest like this is a bad idea uh, like if you are using cloud firestore it's better you use authentication from firebase as well and if you have already integrated uh, any kind of authentication like email password google facebook from firebase then you should use start in production mode uh, the like production mode even for development purpose you can use production mode it's not that uh, you have to use production mode only when you can you deploy uh, app to play store it's not like that but for simplicity given that i am not integrating uh, email authentication or any kind of authentication i will just select start in test mode and once i have selected this uh, here you can see uh, once you select this it provides your default date and time so by this date and time only you can use the start in test mode but yeah it is possible to change the date and time i will show you that as well so here i have just created create okay and here if you, this will be your fire store database whatever you add it, it will be visible over here and inside rules if you go to the rules tab uh, here uh, later on you can add the production uh, rules which you saw otherwise you can just add this timestamp if you want to increase the timestamp you can do that as well just increase the year and that should be fine like 2025 or 2026 whenever you are watching this and if you want to make it uh, only for authenticated user you can just go over here and here you can see uh, you can add something like this okay so allow read write if false so yeah uh, that's it uh, next 
uh, just click on sync now and what all what else i have done is that inside our activity underscore main i have created few buttons one for adding a user first user second for adding second user uh, like just created two buttons for two users uh, you don't have to do this of course but just wanted to have at least two users in my database third button is for reading all users fourth is for reading specified user like specific user if you have fifth one is for deleting a specific user and sixth is updating a specific user so yeah this is how the layout looks like pretty simple now inside our main activity underscore uh, dot kt i have just initialized our firestore and i have created a uh, variables for all our buttons then i have just initialized all our buttons and on first button click listener now while inserting data to firestore you have to use hash map now this hash map can contain any number of properties so i have just added first last and born so for first uh, name it would be ada last lovelace and born in 1815 and this user i want to add into my firebase firestore so here i am creating a collection called users and suppose in sql uh, sql databases you have this users table and inside that i am adding first name last name and born as a column something like that you can uh, imagine i'll show you later on how exactly the output looks like and here i am just adding the user now we don't have to create this user if the if this collection is not present it will create automatically for us so we don't have to worry about it and on success listener i'm just uh, i adding that document reference id but you can do whatever you want similarly for second uh, user second button as well but here you can see i have added one more property called middle middle name so here it was not present so this is kind of like a no sql database so it's okay you don't have to follow a, a given number of columns you can add or remove columns whatever you like and the same thing of adding a user for reading all users again we are just getting reference to our users database or users collection sorry and just calling get and on success listener we are looping each and every result and we are specifying the document id as well as the document data the document data will actually contain all these values and reading a specific user so suppose i want to read only one user whose first uh, name is alan so here you can add this var equal to and i only want one user so i'm limiting it by one and i'm getting it and then on success listener if the documents is not equal to empty i'm just getting the first document and printing the data out okay for deleting a user again same thing uh, i'm uh, deleting a user whose first is uh, like first name key is equal to new allen okay and here i'm just limiting it to one getting it and adding a success listener if documents is not equal to empty i'm getting the document and i'm deleting it and i'm adding a success listener so first you have to get it then delete it similarly for update as well i'm updating a user whose name is allen and i'm first getting it if i'm able to find it then i'm updating it with uh, allen from allen to new allen and i'm just adding a success listener over here so to quickly show you guys the output so here it is what it is the entire code to quickly show you guys the output uh, here you can see now my collection is empty if i click on the first button of add first user go to my database you just have to refresh uh, the uh, browser and here you can see the first user was added with uh, all the properties next i will add second user and here you can see immediately the second user was also added third i will try to read all the users and as you saw in my code i'm just printing it to the console right so once i uh, print it everything inside the console you will see all the values i'll just click on the read all users button so here you can see Lovelace, uh, Mathinson, Turning, Allen, Ada all has been printed. So I'm printing the document ID as well as the name and here I'm reading the specific user of Allen. So here you can see that value has also been printed. Now firstly I'm updating the user. So I'll just click on update user button. So I have clicked it and here you can see the value has been changed from Allen to new Allen. Now I will just delete one user. So I'll just click on delete. So I have clicked on it and here you can see the document uh, got. I only have Ada now. Uh, Alan, new Alan was deleted. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.